Father Yahuwah, we bless you today. We thank you for your son, Yahushua. We thank you for all that you do for us, both small and great. Uh, and we just want to show our love for you by loving your son and keeping your commandments. Bashim Yahushua. Amen. Hands up. And so tonight we're going to switch it around a little bit. And we're going to talk about grace. Because some people think grace is a ticket to do what you want to do. But that's not what grace is all about. Grace is uh, time sensitive. Everybody knows what time sensitive is? Yes. That means after a certain amount of time, uh, if you don't do what's right, it's gone. And so the Abba wants us to know that uh, his grace is time sensitive. It doesn't last forever. How many see that? Show me these scriptures that his grace lasts forever. You can show me the scriptures where it says his mercy endures forever. And so we're going to talk about grace. And uh, some people think it only started in the New Testament. But it actually started in the front of the book with Noah. Noah found grace in the sight of Yahweh. And so uh, let's go to that Genesis 6 and 8. All right, Genesis 6 and 8 says, But Noah found favor in the eyes of Yahweh. And so uh, the thing of it is, he told Noah, Noah, I want you to build an ark. And uh, I want you to do bring in the clean and the unclean and your family, which consisted of eight, and bring them into the ark because what was he getting ready to do? He was getting ready to destroy the world. But how long did the period last? See, that's how we know it's a grace period. It was 120 years back then. So they had 120 years to turn around. Did they turn around? No. They got worse. Uh, let's go to, what is it, Genesis 7, where it begins to rain. It's raining, and nobody's saying, let me in. It's raining. They had never seen rain. It's raining. Nobody said, oh, let me in. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. and so, uh, uh, and remember, I forget where it's at, uh, Matthew, I believe, it says, that, and as the days of who? Noah and Lot. What do you see today? Lot was perverted, perversion and violence. Sodom and Gomorrah was complete perversion and violence. What do you see today? See, and that's what I love about the scriptures. See, the scriptures told us beforehand what we should, and that's how we know we got the truth because we can go back and look and what the scriptures said. We see it in our everyday walk of life. See, and that's what, that's what makes this so powerful. See, I can trust this because I see it happening every day just like it's written all right shane uh that'll work all right matthew 24 and 37 says but as the days of noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be and then there's another one where lots just a couple of scriptures further down but uh, that's what we need to understand. The scriptures is telling us what's to come. So we need to do what? Prepare ourselves. See, all this little fidgety stuff we're doing, getting mad over this, getting mad over that, uh, you better grow up real fast because the tribulation period ain't going to be playing. See, we're going to have to grow up. All these little petty things we're doing around here, it ain't going to work then. And that's why the scripture says, uh, you find it? Yeah, what you were looking for, actually, it's in Luke 17. Okay. It's in Luke 17, beginning in 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate and they drank and they married wives and were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, 
They ate and they drank. They bought and they sold. They planted and they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So what are we seeing? Things is beginning to line up perfectly as the scripture told us it would. See, I don't have to go to Kabbalah to tell you something. I don't have to go to uh, uh, the Talmud or Matthew Henry or all these other things. I just look in the scriptures and the scriptures interpret themselves. And now, who here can see that it's happening as in the days of Noah? Let's go back to chapter 6 and verse, uh, let me give me scripture right here. Uh, chapter 6 and <clears throat> 5. Yeah, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Uh, Genesis 6 and verse 5 says that Elohim saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Is that what we see today? It's exactly what you see today. So we can take heart. I'm on the right team. I'm walking in the right road. I bought the truth, and I'm going to sell it because it's what? And I got my hands up, giving thanks. See? And that's what's so powerful about this, see? We can say, hey, I got my hands up. I know what to do. <laughs> I'm surrendered to his will. Just like Yahushua said. Nevertheless, not my will, but his will. This is his will because he said, as in the days of Noah and Lot. Now, let's jump to uh, Genesis chapter 7 and start with uh, verse 4. Genesis 7, verse 4. Hi, Genesis 7 and 4. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that Yahweh had commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters were upon the earth. So here we see they had seven more days to think about what they were doing. Did they do it? Just like today. Man is not thinking. Because he hates the truth. I'm thinking of mankind as a whole, okay? There's a, approximately 8 billion people on the earth, and as a whole, they're not thinking. They're not thinking. They think nothing's ever going to happen. In fact, there's a, a popular, popular preacher preaching there ain't no hell. Well, see, here's the thing. Always remember, if there ain't no hell, there ain't no heaven. If there ain't no hell, there ain't no heaven. See, yeah. So you have to look at things when you hear things, see. Learn to know what the truth sounds like. That's why you need to read this book for yourself. See, I, I adjure you. When I'm up here, you get this book out. Because I could be lying to you. I could be trying to deceive you. But I don't because I got a uh, judge to go before myself. But I adjure you, get the book out so that when you're amongst other people, go to Ephesians 4.14. Ephesians 4 and 14 says, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So where are they at? In the house. Where was the deception at? In Moses' day? Where was the deception at? In Yahushua's day? See, we're looking for it out there. No, the world is the world. See, that's the great deception. You think it's out there, but it's actually here. In the house. So that's what we have to be able to discern truth from error and that's why we teach you foundational things and please do not say the rabbi said that means you do not know do not say that see i try to teach you so you can do it for yourself 
That's the way Yahushua did it. That's the way the apostles did it. That's the way Paul did it. See, see, because he said, he told them, he said, uh, you should be teachers, but you're yet babes. See, I get a lot of things I hear, and I'm thinking, am I that bad of a teacher? But Yahushua was the same way. He said, have, have I been so long with you that you do not understand? See, that's why I adjure you. Write this stuff down when I'm teaching. So the, how many witnesses do we need? So when I'm speaking, that's one witness. When you write it down, that's two witnesses. And when you speak it, that's three witnesses. That means I got it. See, you, you ain't got it if you can't explain it to somebody else. You don't have it yourself. That's the problem. A lot of people want to run with this, but if you don't have it yourself, how can you help somebody else? Because you, here's what you're going to say. Uh, the rabbi said, uh, it's this way. Uh, uh, and uh, I think he said, no, you ain't got it. You need to be able to get this book out. Say, this is your weapon. This is your tool. If you don't learn to use it, you're going to be in trouble. See, some people think they can piggyback. There ain't no piggybacking. I'm going to tell you now. No piggybacking. So get this book out. Look for yourself. Understand. And I've given you, we're giving you all the two or three witnesses in pattern. These are so powerful. And now we got another one. Hands up. So powerful. And we got another one. Buy the truth and sell it not because it's priceless. priceless. Say, don't turn, if you're going to stand up for something, make sure it's the truth you stand up for. Don't stand up for a lie. Stand up for the truth. How many see that? And so that's what the scriptures is trying to teach us, as in the days of Noah and Lot. But even, look at his grace. He gave him 120 years to get it right. And he, you don't think he didn't give grace to Sodom and Gomorrah? How did he give grace to Sodom and Gomorrah? No, no, no. Think about it. There you go. Abraham said, if there is 50, he said, I'll spare it. If there's 40, I'll spare it. If that's 30, 20, and he got all the way down to 10, and he couldn't find 10, so he couldn't spare it. <clears throat> See how his grace works? Mm -hmm. See, people think this grace is, oh, it's, it's, I can do anything, I'm in his, no, do you better start thinking, you don't do, hey, you're thinking wrong. See, I'm talking about this period. There's a type of grace that's called failure. Of favor, but I'm talking about this period that is very time sensitive. Noah had 120 years, and nobody believed him because they had never seen rain, and they wasn't going to believe him anyway. Mm, made fun of him. Same thing about Lot. They were so perverted, they was going to uh, indulge with the angels. You had to grab him by the hand and get him out of there. See? So, but he gives us grace not to keep doing what you're doing. Grace is to do to shuva or repentance and do a 180 degree turn back to Torah. It's not to keep going the wrong way. See, they think, grace, I can just keep going the wrong way. And I, I'm, a, I'm a, hey, grace. No, that's not, that's not grace. And we're going to prove it to you without a shot of a doubt. Uh, and so uh, let's go to Ezra 9 and 8. All right, Ezra 9 and 8. <laughs> and now for a little space, grace has been showed from Yahweh Elohim to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place that our Elohim may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. Now, did he do that for them to keep going the wrong way? No. 
He did it. He gave them this space to see would they turn around. What they start doing, and Ezra and Nehemiah, they, they got them turned around. So that's what this period of grace is all about, getting us turned around. Not to keep doing what you're doing, but to get us turned around. See, that's what, sir? Yes, and that's what we got to understand. His grace is so great that he extends it to me and you. So that even when we mess up, he says, I'm going to give you a period to turn around and get it right. See? That's how great he is. He says, I want to show you how great I am. Listen to how great he is. He said, I even gave Jezebel what? A space to repent. Revelations um, 2 and 21. Uh, Revelation 2 and 21. And I gave her a space to repent of her fornication, but she would not. Keep reading. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the assembly shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your work. So he gave even Jezebel a space to repent. And she did what? Repented not. So when that time sensitive space was gone, he said, now I'm going to kill your children and you, and I'm going to give you a double to your double. See? So let's don't look at grace as something to keep doing what we're doing. It's something to get us turned around. It's just like if a policeman stops you, I'm doing 80 miles an hour, the speed limit is 55. He pulls me over and he looks at me. And if I'm nice or cordial, he may say, um, sir, I'm not going to give you a ticket this time. I'm only going to give you a warning. Don't do it what? Again. So now I've seen his grace offered to me, but it's time since it's because of I, I've seen some people get stopped. They write them a ticket, they get back in that vehicle, and doing it again. They, they didn't learn anything. So he's trying to get us to learn why we have this period of grace. And so he gave Jezebel. What was what is Je the spirit of Jezebel? When a woman is trying to lead and not the man. That's the spirit of Jezebel. When Ahab was king. And he said, I don't have, I want this little vineyard over here. What did Jezebel do? I get it for you. See? So men, let's be men. Ladies, help your men do good. Because if you try to rule over them, you're going against Yahweh. Remember, uh, I hate to say it this way, but James Brown did have it right. It's a man's world, but what would it be without a mo woman or a girl? So he created man first, and we look at Adam and Eve. Why do you think we men go first? Because Eve ate first. That's what the whole problem started over. She ate. She shouldn't have ever ate. She should have said, Adam, what would, she, what would we do? So we're fighting that today. One more case. Sarah, she said, I'll help the Abba out. No. Hey, take this little Egyptian we got, and Abraham, you go into her. And he come up with a who? We're fighting Ishmael to this very day. See two occasions? They tried to take the lead. It ain't good. You see it again in Revelations, I think it's 17, where the, this woman is riding the beast. Who's in control? The rider. She's riding the beast. That means she's trying to lead. And what happens to her? They kill her. Let's go to Revelation chapter 17. So we have to know our place. And once we find our place, let's do it that way. But don't be found to be fighting against him. You're not going to win. I tell you, you're not going to win.
Let me get to it. Start at verse 14. And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is master of masters and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he said unto me, The waters which you saw, where the horse sits, are people and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw upon the beast, they shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For Yahweh has put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of Yahweh shall be fulfilled. And that woman which you saw is that great city, which reigns over the kings of the so earth. So they destroyed her, because that's not Yahweh's uh, principle of operation. I'm not trying to say it because uh, uh, I'm trying to do anything, but this is what the book says. What do you want to do? You want to buy the truth and sell it not? Or take your own way? You have a choice to make here. Amen? And so let's go to another scripture. Show it to you again. Uh, Revelations 18, start at verse 4. Read through 18. I mean, 8. Revelation 18, 4 through 8. Now, Revelations 18, beginning in 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you do not receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Yahweh has remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she has rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fill to her double. How much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I sit a queen, and, am, and I am not a widow. I shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is Yahweh Elohim who judges her. See, she's doing something she's not supposed to be doing. So, but Yahweh always gives us a grace period to get turned around, to get our lives back together. Hands up. See, I need his grace every day because I, I need to get turned around sometimes. But my wife look at me now and tell me I ain't perfect. So, I don't get mad. I just try to do better. See, that's what, that's what this is all about. Doing better. And that's why he gives us grace, period. Uh, let's look at uh, um, let's go to um, Psalm 51, and this is Dawid. He had just been with who? Bathsheba, and just had murdered his best friend, Uriah. What should have happened to him? Now, this is, this is mercy here. So, grace gives us things we don't deserve. Mercy pushes back what we do deserve. I mean, you see that. All right, Psalm 51, beginning in verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O Elohim, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. So here's David. He messed up, but he's willing to do what? Teshuva. Because if you don't do the shuvah, grace, that time sensitive per time is going to run out. And now I was going to send out judgment. And it ain't going to be good. See, even Yahushua himself. Let's go to that. Uh, ba -do -ba -do -ba -do. Let's, let's go to John 1 14 through 17. John 1 14 through 17. All right, John 1, beginning in verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we all received, 
and grace for grace. For the law of Moshe, or the law was given by Moshe, but grace and truth came by Yahushua HaMoshiach. Now you understand what they're talking about. In the law, if you were guilty, punishment went out. Just like the Philistines, punishment went out. Well, if you were guilty and uh, you needed stripes, who did you appeal to? Was no appeal. They gave you the stripes. That's what he's talking about. See, under the Torah, it wants you. And see, that's what another thing people uh, uh, say. Well, I'm not convicted. Duh. What happens when you're convicted? What's left? The sentence. So don't wait till you're convicted. Do it because the word says do it. I hear, Lord, I'm, I'm not convicted. Of, oh, really? Well, once you're convicted, it's too late. <laughs> See, just do it because he said do it. Amen? And so uh, uh, we need to see how this thing plays out so that I can get my life right, you can get your life right. How many want to get it right? See, I want to get it right. I'm, I'm practicing. I know I'm not perfect. I can look in that mirror myself. My wife ain't got to tell me. But I can look in the mirror and say, Jimmy Ray, you got a way to go, boy. See? That's a mature believer. See? You got to learn to be mature in this journey. Learn to do it yourself. It says, if I judge myself, I shall not be. So go look in the mirror and see who you are. Let's go to James. Uh, what is that? He said, look at the perfect law. Uh, uh, let's start at uh, 122, James 122. And so now we understand the difference between the law and grace and truth. Grace and truth says, I'm going to give you a time limit to get it right. Not to keep doing wrong, but to get it right. Yahushua has been gone almost 2,000 years. That's been the grace period. When he shows up, uh-oh. He's coming back with a sword out of his mouth. <laughs> he ain't playing games. You had time to get it right. All right. All right. James 1, beginning in verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if, if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself and he goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So, we got to learn to look in the mirror for ourselves. See, you look in the mirror. You don't need the rabbi to beat you upside the head. You got this book. That's what Yahushua told, Mo, told uh, the the, the uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He said, think not. I'm coming to judge you. There's one that judges you, even Moshe, in whom you trust. And had you believed Moshe, you'd have believed me. But because you didn't believe Moshe, you sure ain't going to believe me. See? So it's the, he said, go look in the book and find what's wrong with yourself. See? Don't be afraid. to See, so many people are afraid of failure. They're afraid to look at this. Failure just tells you this ain't working. That's all it is. It's, it's actually your friend. It just tells you this ain't working. Remember I told you I, I made a 30 on one of those tests. It told me, hey, boy, you better, get, <laughs> you better listen a little bit better. I didn't think, I didn't take it personal like I'm a, oh, I'm a bad person. <laughs> really? It's because I made 30 on a test? Come on. It wasn't the final test. See? So be able to deal with failure. Look in the mirror and see. Be honest with yourself. This, this old adage, honesty is what? See? If I can look in the mirror and see me and see my little spots and blemishes and do something about it, that is a mature believer. That's where he wants us to get to be able to look in the mirror 
and say, I'm falling short here. I'm doing pretty good here. But I'm really doing bad here. I'm really doing it. See, you got to be able to see where you're at in order to go forward. See, what do you do when nobody's around? I do look in the book. See? And so he gives a, a grace spirit. And so Moses, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth, or a time sensitive period, came by Yahushua. Uh, where's that at? It says, and after two days, uh, is that Micah? And the third day, uh, uh, I'll raise you up again, something like that. So, two days is almost gone. He left in 20, uh, 30 A.D. This is 20, 23 A.D. <laughs> Do you count? Who? Yeah. Okay. What is it? Hoshea 610? 6-2. Yeah, Hoshea 6 and 2. After two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. See, he's given us two days to get this thing right. For a day with him is a thousand years, a thousand years, one day. Check this out. In Matthew... Uh, 23, uh, I think it's 37 through 39. He said, uh, I would have gathered you as a hen gathered her chicks, but you would not. And so I leave to you your house, what? Desolate. And he said, you will not see me again till you say, Baruch haba Hashem Yahweh, lest it's he that comes in the name of Yahweh. I might be misquoting, so read it for me. Matthew 23, beginning in 37. <clears throat> o Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that kill the prophets and stone them which are sent unto you, how often would I have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and you would not? Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of Yahweh. Did he give him a grace period? How long? Huh? No, I'm talking this particular scripture. Read that 24, 1 and 2 and 3 where it says there wouldn't be a stone left upon another. Hmm? So how long was the grace period? Ooh, what do we know about 40? Trials and tribulations. Our trials and tribulations, times of testing. So he gave them 40 years to get it right. Did they get it right? They got worse. Just like you see the world doing today. They're getting worse. And guess what? Y'all was helping him. See, he gonna help you. If you want to be crazy and ignorant and delusional, he says, I'll help you. <laughs> I got some stuff <laughs> that'll drive you nuts. Go to... Um, Second Thessalonians two and ten, somewhere around in there. Uh, not is it that's it? Yeah, Second Thessalonians. Yes, correct. Second Thessalonians two and ten, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved, and for this cause Yahweh shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now you see why all these folks are so crazy. See, Yahweh is helping them. That's why we buy the truth and sell it not, because it is priceless. If you do not love the truth, look what's coming to you. He's sending it. Let's go to another scripture to back this up. Uh, Isaiah 45 and 7 or 8, where it says, uh, I, Yahweh, I create light, 
not form the darkness. I, I create good and evil. So this strong delusion is his evil. <laughs> There's a difference between evil and sin. How many know that? Evil means pain, misery, and woe. Sin is breaking the Torah. The tr sin is transgression of the Torah, breaking the Torah. That's sin. Evil is pain, misery, and woe. Because I thought my mama was evil when she come in there and got that switch on me. <laughs> but she was just trying to get me to be a good, upstanding young man. That was it. See? All right. At Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. Who does that? And so now you see what he's talking about in 2 Thessalonians. He says, I will send you strong delusion. So whatever you do, fall in love with the truth, you'll be all right. But there are people that hate the truth. There are people in the Messianic movement that hate the truth. How do they hate the truth? They hate their son. You think he's happy about that? Mm -mm. The father ain't happy about you hating his son. Yes, ma'am? Uh, there's, there's many truths that they don't like. I mean, Yahushua is one of them, but they don't like the truth of, well, you should have her head covered or... We should, you know, dress modestly or wear zizio or, you know, um, there's all kinds of little things they try to just skirt around and, um, so yeah. Okay, but hating his son, top of the list. Okay, hating his son. You hate his son, you've already written your guilty plea. There are people in the Messianic movement to say that Yahushua is not the son, to say he's not Moshiach. And yet, a heathen, this is what's so bad about it, a heathen, a rank heathen said, truly, this is the son of Elohim. A rank heathen. He didn't know nothing about the Roman soldier. But how did he know that this was the son? Darkness came over the earth. There was a whole lot of shaking going on. He said, mm, this ain't no average man this happening. See, but a heathen could recognize it. He said, truly, this is the son of Elohim. See, we, if you don't love the son, you're in trouble, big trouble. And that's when I break fellowship with you. If you don't love the son, don't call me. I ain't got nothing to do with you. Yes, sir. Where's the microphone? He, he denied the son. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of them do. Yeah. But they call him, see, it's an oxymoron. They say Messianic, which means they, I believe in Messiah, but yet they don't believe he's Messiah. Go ahead. I was just going to say about the same thing. A friend of ours, he was on um, a different group turned around and she took animals over people in the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, we're done. Yeah. But that's why I broke I can put up with a lot of things. But when you deny the son, do not call me. Don't I don't want you to come here. Uh, remember that, that door swings two ways. You can come in or you can go out. You deny the son, I'm gonna lead you out. I'm seventy years old. Don't think I ain't bold. Don't fool yourself. <laughs> See? Just because I'm 70 years old, don't fool yourself. Okay? You deny the son, I'm going to lead you out the door. I will lead you out the door. Because you just wrote your own judgment. You did it. I didn't do it. And so we have no fellowship with darkness. That's darkness. To deny the son. There ain't no way to the father. Except through this son. He said in John 10, he said, I am the door. If any man come in, he got to come by me. Any other way, he's a what? Thief and a robber. And Tam and Shane sang that song. I saw some come up another way. And they, they did what? They met their fate. 
See? So let's fall in love with the son, this glorious son who loved us so much. Think what he did. He said, no shame. Let's go to that uh, because I'm quoting it wrong. Hebrews 12 and 1 and 2. He said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the stake. Wow. You tell me, you tell me he, he didn't come with grace? At Hebrews 12, beginning in verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Yahushua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the stake, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne. And you're not going to love the son? See, the scripture plainly says, For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave what? His only begotten son, that whoever believes in him might have eternal life. So, you don't want the son? In fact, in First John it says, uh, he that has not the son does not have the father. And he does not have the father doesn't have the son. Yes, ma'am. Come on. Um, so if you did not believe in Yahushua and then you believe in Yahushua, that is different from believing in him than choosing you know, not to, and then you can't come back after that. Is that correct? There's a difference between not knowing who he was and then choosing to believe in him. And then um, after you found out about him, yeah. If you deny him, I have what, what is left. Right. So I'm just kind of repeating. As long as you deny him, there's no coming back. It's plain and simple. How you, can you come back when you deny him? He's plain. This is what he said. If you deny me, before men, I will deny you before my father. So if they're denying, there is no way back. Long as they're denying. But he does give them a grace spirit to change their mind. That's what grace is all about. A, a time to change your mind. Look, I changed my mind. I was going to hell in a, on a roller coaster. The biggest roller coaster you could find. The Texas thing, whatever it was. I was, woof. But he turned me around. See, you have a right to change your mind. He's just that great. He says, I'll let you change your mind. But you're going to love my son. There ain't no getting around that. A lot of people try to get around it. Say, oh, he was a good man. He was a prophet. But when the father showed up, he said what? This is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. And he didn't do it just once. He did it a number of times. And even at the transfiguration, he told Peter, James, and John, this is my son, hear ye him. See? So there's no other, if you don't want the son, you got to go. You got to get up out of here. See? Because you just put judgment on yourself. There's no way to the Father except through the Son. Remember, we explained it to you. Those wires up there, Shane, have how many amps or volts, whatever it is? <laughs> 13,009 volts, 900 volts. How many want to go grab hold of it? Which of you do you think can grab hold of it and live? But. There's another thing called a step-down transformer that allows us to use the power, but it's been stepped down. That's what Yahushua is. He's the step-down transformer so that we could go get back to the Father. That's why he said, when you pray, pray our Father. See, that's how we get back to the Father. He said, pray to the Father, what? In my name. See, so we're not bypassing him. We're going to the Father in his name. We're not denying the Son. And the Son gives us a great spirit, it says, just like it did uh, uh, 
Pharisees and Sadducees, he says, uh, you won't see me again. He left in 30 A.D. Titus destroyed Jerusalem in 70 A.D. They had 40 years to get this thing right, and they refused. Actually, they got worse. They actually got worse. Because they were beating the disciples and trying wanting to kill the disciples. They actually got worse. See, so this grace period is something hands up. See, it works in our daily life. Sometimes we mess up. See, if you're honest with yourself, if you're being honest with yourself, I'm not talking to you. But if you're honest with yourself, we mess up sometimes. But, yeah, yeah. But not only that, we're supposed to be honest with ourselves and with him. Listen to what it says. John, uh, 1 John 1 and 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach, his son, cleanses us from all. See? He, that's why he's, he knew he was going to mess up. So he says, I got blood for you. <laughs> to help you get back on the right road. In uh, Isaiah 1 and 18, he says, Though your sins be as scarlet, it should be white like stone. Let it be red like crimson. Uh, white like wool. In other words, I can deal with it. Just bring it to me, confess it, own up to it. And that's another thing the world is so crazy about. They want to blame everybody but themselves. You did it. Remember I told you about the preacher? He blamed, he went around, he had a big congregation. He went around the congregation, he blamed everybody. And one day he finally ran out of people to blame. Yeah, look at himself. See, the blame game don't work with Yahweh. Just ask Adam and Eve. Adam said, it's this woman. This woman said, it's the serpent. He said, all right, I'll get all three of you. <laughs> I'll fix this. I'll get all three of you. <laughs> See? So, and that's what he's, he's trying to show us. Grace is time sensitive for us to turn around. He's so loving to us. He said, I'm going to give you a chance to get it right. I'm going to show you how great I am. He says, I'm going to give you a, spe a spirit, a, a period to turn around, to do one. What did he tell the woman who was taken in adultery? In other words, they caught her in the act, and he began to write on the ground. And no doubt he began to... John, here's your sin. Jerry, here's your sin. Buddy, here's yours. And Johnny, here's yours. And he kept writing. And when he got through, who was around him? And he asked the woman, where are thou accusers? And he said, neither do I accuse you. Go your way. That was grace. Because she was supposed to be dead. Because they caught her. Yeah. They don't. They don't. They only brought her. I don't know why they didn't bring the man, but they only brought her. But it's. But the principal. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Shelby. <Jeff. laughs> Can't I run the truth though? <laughs> but see what I mean? How how His grace works, even when we mess up. He gives us a space to turn around to get it right. That's how great He is. That's why we love the son. He gives us a time to get it right, even though we mess up. Sometimes it's on a daily basis. See, I used to be in an uh, organization. They, they would say, uh, how did they say that? Uh, uh, no sin have I done. I've been holy all day. I ain't seen. Now I'm thinking, really? I had a guy that was, yeah, I had a guy that told, I had a guy that, uh, he said, I am perfect. I ain't got no wrong in me. And you know what I told him? I said, come in. Let me ask your wife. He didn't speak to me no more. <laughs> see, that, see, don't love a lie. It's going to catch up with you. He, he said, everything in darkness will be what? lies are darkness 
and he says, it will be brought to the light. See, and that's what I love. And see, look at this. Grace is in part, where do you find it at? In the Torah. And they try to tell you it's been done away with. Look what's all in the Torah. <laughs> see? They, it's, that's why so many, even in the Messianic movement, they're not ta taught foundational things. Remember, it's foundational things that you want to be taught first. Because those things are going to be with you the rest of your life. Hands up, foundational, but you can use it for the rest of your life. Yeah. And what's so powerful about it? We started using it as soon as the obligate revealed it to me. We started hands up. You can use it. See, I'm not going to tell you. Uh, I want to get on the soft level. Huh? Uh, there's supposedly four levels of uh, interpretation. Uh, Peshat, Ramez, uh, Josh, and Sod. And Sod is the deepest level. Mystery. And that's why when you said, I show you a mystery, he said, I'm showing you, but I'm going to explain this mystery to you. See, the scripture plainly says, I forget where it's at, mysteries belong to Yahweh. But what's revealed belongs to man. But man is so busy trying to get in these things he ain't got no business in. What did David say? What is that at? Psalms um, 132. Keep back that servant from things that are too high for me. I think that's it. Is that correct? Somewhere around in there. Nope, that ain't it. Uh, somebody find it for me. Oh, here it is. 131 and 1. Close, but not close enough. All right, Psalm 131 and 1 says, Yahweh, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. See, some things are just too high for us, above our pay grade. Leave it alone. See, because in the day of trouble, listen to me, in the day of trouble, you're not going to look and say, what is the soul level on this? What is the soul on this? You're going to be just like Peter. Master, help me. See, that's foundational. <laughs> it ain't what Ram Bam said or Rashi said or the sages said. That ain't going to help you. Yahushua didn't teach that away. He always referred him to who? Moshe and the Tanakh. He said, let's go to um, what is it? Luke 24:44. All things must be fulfilled that are written in the Torah, the Navim, the, the Navim and the Kittushim. Come on, what is it? <laughs> Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which are written in the Torah of Moshe and the prophets or the Navim, and in the Psalms or the writings, the Kittuvim, concerning me. See? Judgment is not coming from what the sages say. It's not coming from Rambam. It's not coming from Rosh. It's not coming from the Talmud. It's not coming from Kabbalah. Those esoteric things, judgment is not coming from there. Yes, ma'am? Also, if you think they got Yahushua wrong, they missed him completely, mm -hmm. they got that wrong, how could I trust anything else that they're telling me mm -hmm. if they got that wrong? See, and, and listen to this. Even though he fulfilled everything that the Torah, he told them, if you had known Moshe, you would know me because Moshe wrote about me. But Philip and them got it right. Where's that at? Uh, John 1 and something where Philip says, uh, hey, Nathaniel, come. We have found the one that Moshe wrote about. 
See, they were looking for him. All right, John 1 and 45. Now Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moshe in the Torah and the prophets did write, Yehushua of Nazareth, the son of Yosef. And Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? So what did the prophets say? The prophets told us where he would be born, where he would live, what his name would be, what his authority was. And it says, and the government should be where? <clears throat> Told us all of that. And he fulfilled those things. And some of them try to say, well, he wasn't called Emmanuel. See, see, one word error. They take one thing and lose the whole show one thing but they don't realize he did what Emmanuel says L with us that's what he was <laughs> see so remember if you take you bring me one thing you're already shot you, you, you're done it's got to be two or three witnesses they took one thing he wasn't called Emmanuel but he did he was L in the flesh so, tonight, we looked at grace, and maybe next time I'll get to mercy, because well, that's very important. Mercy, guess what? Endures forever. It has no limit on it. And so, tonight, be sure to get the book out, read for yourself, and understand. The scripture says in Proverbs, uh, 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 with all thy getting, Proverbs 4, I think, with all thy getting, get wisdom. And with thy getting, get what? Understanding. An understanding. See? We got to understand. That's what the, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the uh, Ethiopian eunuch, Philip asked him. He was reading Isaiah. And Philip asked him, understand what thou readest? <laughs> How can if I ain't got nobody to teach it to me? <laughs> See, understanding is so important. Because here's the thing about understanding. Uh, we always said understanding is the 50% of the journey. Once I understand, all I got to do is apply what I understand and I get the other 50%. <laughs> Proverbs 4 and 4, or somewhere around in there? 4 and 5? Okay. All right, Proverbs 4 and 5. Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh, it's, it's above there or below there. It's in the same spot. With all I get and get an understanding. It's, it's real close. Okay. Yeah, Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all you're getting, get understanding. Get an understanding. Understanding means I know how, why, how, and why it operates this way. Wisdom means I just know that one and one is two, and, and, and I got ducks over here, and I got uh, cows over here. But understanding knows how they live and have their being. That's understanding. See, wisdom is just you get your head full. There's a lot of wise people. Who was the wisest man in the world? And look what happened to him. See, and so, so many people want this wisdom. The wisest man in the world. What did the father tell him? I don't want you no more. You ain't nothing like your daddy. See, so when you get wisdom, you get an understanding. All right, so tonight we learned about grace. It's time sensitive. And so it just means I'm giving you the time to turn around and come back to me and walk upright. Buy the truth and sell it not because it's priceless. Because if you don't love the truth, 
to bother him. I'm going to send you strong delusion. That's what you see. And I tell people, it's very strong. Well, some of these people, they ain't got no respect for themselves. I mean, the things they do, they, they <laughs> you think, boy, you ain't got no respect for your own self. Yeah, yeah. And so when they do that, they ain't got a chance to get my respect. Abba, we love and appreciate you. Appreciate you, John Yahushua. Thank you for your grace through your son, Yahushua. We just want to show our love for you by keeping your commandments. The Shem Yahushua. Amen.